When you are graphing y equals the square root of x, we're going to use a table of values to graph this. And I'm going to choose the x values 0, 1, 4, 9. Does anyone want to take a guess why I selected those specific x values? They are perfect squares. We can take the square root of them very easily. So these are our x values. These are our y values. The square root of 0 is 0. Square root of 1 is 1. Square root of 4 is 2. And the square root of 9 is 3. So let's take a moment and plot those points. These points connect in a lovely curve. It is important to note that at the point 0, 0, this graph is going to stop. It will extend farther to the right, but it does not extend to the left. It stops at the point 0, 0. And that is because if we tried to do the square root of negative 4, we would get an imaginary number, and there's no place for imaginary numbers on the real coordinate system of our graph. Because the graph stops there, that affects the domain and the range. The domain is always the x values, and our domain for this graph is x is greater than or equal to 0. Notice in our table of values, we have 0 in there, and we have numbers bigger than 0, but no negative numbers. So all of our x values must be larger than or equal to 0. Anyone want to take a guess what the range is on this? y is greater than or equal to 0. OK, now I'm actually going to do the notes out of order. But let's look at number 4. Number 4 is y equals 2 times the square root of x minus 1 plus 3. When we graph this, we are basically going to look just at everything up to the x, and then we'll think about what does the minus 1 and the plus 3 really mean. So my original table of values was... I'm going to make kind of a big table of values, 0, 1, 4, 9, and the square root of that, we had 0, 1, 2, 3. If I do 2 times the square root of x, like I have highlighted in the green, it's going to take that middle column and multiply it by 2. So what is 0 times 2? Two? 2. What is 1 times 2? 2. 2 times 2, and 3 times 4, 6. So I'm actually going to be plotting the points 0, 0, 1, 2, 4, 4, and 9, 6. So do you see how I took the table of values that we started with for square root of x, and we just multiplied the y values times 2 because you've got a 2 in front of the square root of x. Now these aren't my actual points, these are still temporary points. This point zero, zero isn't actually going to be zero, zero because of this other stuff. What does the minus one mean? It means left or right. So it means right one. And what does the plus three mean? Up three. So that point zero, zero is going to get moved right one and up three, and that's where the point is actually going to be. The next one is one, two. So I've got the point one, two, which is right here. I put a little X there. Maybe can, can you see that I put a little tiny X there? Then we move that point right one and up three, and that's where the point actually goes. 4, 4, move the point, right 1, up 3. 
and 9, 6 was originally here. Right 1, up 3, it would be off the graph up there. Oops, that's a little bit too straight. Okay, the graph still stops at that leftmost point. And that is going to affect the domain and the range. That point isn't at 0, 0. That point is at 1, 3. So because the graph moved right 1, our domain is x is greater than or equal to 1. Okay, the graph moved up 3. Anyone want to take a guess on the range? y is greater than or equal to 3. So this is because the graph moved right 1. And this is because the graph moved up three. So moving right and left, up and down, that's going to affect that range and domain and change it from zero to whatever we move side to side or up or down. Okay, now kind of a crazy question. What if there had been a negative in front of that two? It would flip this graph down underneath. So I want you to write down here, if there's a flip, your domain would be x is less than or equal to however much that thing moved right or left. And the range would be y is less than or equal to however much that graph moved up or down. So do you see how the inequality symbol flips when there's a flip? When there's a flip, the inequality flips. Okay. Now, basically, I want you to be able to look at a graph and be able to identify which graph belongs to what equation just based on the equation. But could you, if you wanted to, grab a graphing calculator and type in y equals 2 times the square root of x minus 1, go out from underneath the radical, and then add 3, there's the graph. Do you remember how to get the points? Second graph. And then you could rep record some of these points. Look for the points that start. See how we've got error on the top? So you want to start with the point 1, 3, 2, 5, 5, 7, and 10, 9. You just find the points that work to graph. So can you use the graphing calculator to do all of the figuring for you? Yes, you absolutely can. And I am fine with that. But the one thing that you are going to have to really, really think about on these graphs is the domain and the range. Because this graph stops at this point right here, I want you to think about what that does to the domain and range. And it's really linked to how the graph moved right, left, up, or down. That's why it's so important for you to know that right, left, up, down stuff. Okay, now let's go to cube root graphs. So number two up above. <clears throat> this time for our xy table, I'm going to use negative 8, negative 1, 0, 1, 8. If you've gotten at all familiar with the perfects chart, do you know why I used those numbers? They are perfect cubes. We can start at 0. Cube root of 0 is 0. Cube root of 1 is 1. What's the cube root of negative 1? Negative 1. Cube root of 8 is 2. The cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. So with cube root functions, you can have negative numbers in there. This actually is really, really nice when it comes to the domain and the range. Anyone want to guess the domain and the range? Uh-huh. All real numbers. All real numbers. So the only crazy domain and range is for square root graphs. Cube root graphs, all real numbers, all real numbers. We've got negative numbers and positives and zero in our x's. We've got negatives, positives, and zero in our y's. So we can use any real number. 
If we plot these points, we've got negative 8, negative 2, these three points, and 8, 2. For number three, we have y equals the cube root of x. If I stop there, the only change to this is the plus one and the minus two. What does the plus one do? Left one. And the minus two moves everything down two. Because there's no number multiplied in front of the cube root, you can use the points from number two, from the original cube root of x graph. So we can find the point negative eight, negative two, but then move that left one and down two. <coughs> negative one, negative one. Move it left one, down two. Zero, zero, move it left one, down two. And keep going with the rest of those. Now, if you wanted to, you can go into y equals, use your math button to find your cube root function, <coughs> cube root of x plus 1, move outside of the radical, minus 2. There's the graph. If you do second graph to get the table, you can pick out some of these points. It might just be a little bit more difficult to find the points. We've got the point negative 9, negative 4, negative 2, negative 3, negative 1, negative 2, 0, negative 1, and we want to keep going to find that other point, 7, 0. So if you want to use the graphing calculator to get the table, that is fine, but I do want you to think about what does the plus 1 and the minus 2 do, because you could actually graph this by hand fairly easily if you know the original table of values and then just move the points around. Okay, last part, domain and range. What's the domain and range for this one? All real numbers, all real numbers.